Have you heard about the scientists who delved too deeply into the Earth and discovered the gates of hell? During the 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in the Great Space Race, but they were also competing to see who could get to the center of the Earth first. As a direct consequence, the world's largest hole was created. The Soviet Union was able to dig as far as they could before their machinery overheated and they were forced to halt. It was a remarkable achievement of science at the time. On the other hand, for some people it represented a horrifying step into, uh, hell. Why did the Russians plug the world's deepest hole? What did they discover in the Kola Superdeep Borehole? Can we dig deeper now? Join us as we explore how scientists discovered something in the deepest hole on Earth that no one was supposed to see. In the 1960s, Russian scientists embarked on an ambitious drilling project with the aim of penetrating the Earth's upper crust and collecting samples from the warm, mysterious area where the crust and mantle intermingle, known as the Mohorovii discontinuity, or MOHO. The depth of this region required the scientists to develop novel approaches to drilling, some of which proved quite ingenious. However, Despite the Russians' best efforts over the course of several decades, they were unable to uncover all of the planet's mysteries. However, the Soviet work did yield a wealth of information about what lay just beneath the surface, and this information is still relevant to science today. The project is known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole. The USSR's Interdepartmental Scientific Council for the Study of the Earth's Interior and Superdeep Drilling spearheaded the drilling operation, which began in 1962 after years of planning. It began at the same time as the Space Race, an intense period of competition between the United States and the Soviet Union, and in 1965 the project's leaders chose to drill on the Kola Peninsula in the northwestern part of the Soviet Union after conducting a reconnaissance to select a suitable drill site. In 1970, after another five years of planning and building, the drill finally started making its way underground. The project's special drilling equipment is housed inside a 200-foot-tall cage. Most deep drilling rigs employ a revolving shaft to bore through the ground, utilizing a series of extensions that are steadily added as the hole becomes deeper but such a system proved impracticable with a hole as deep as Kola was projected to be. To get around this problem, the Russian scientists came up with a system whereby just the drill bit at the shaft's end was turned. They were successful in doing so by spinning the custom-made drill bit by pumping pressurized, drilling mud down the drill shaft. The modest, simple, heavy-duty maintenance hole cover is fastened in place with a dozen massive, rusty bolts it stands among rotting wood and sheets of scrap metal, remnants of the derrick and housing that once stood in Russia, at an abandoned drill site. The world's deepest man-made hole is located below, and its nine-inch diameter makes it nearly invisible from the surface. Researchers on the surface could get an ever closer look at the Earth's composition thanks to the Soviet's drilling rig, which was built such that core samples would be delivered throughout the whole length of the drill shaft. Geologists have already drawn certain conclusions about the deep crust of the Earth from surface measurements and seismic data before the super-deep drilling project began. A few scientific ideas were shattered, but that is par for the course when humans explore the unknown. Kola was an example of how certainty from a distance is no certainty at all. Researchers are often surprised by what they uncover when they start drilling. That's fascinating and unsettling all at the same. To explore the cosmos beyond our solar system, NASA sent Voyager 1 into space in 1977. So why have engineers just dug a few miles into the planet in 20 years? It turns out that drilling a deep hole into the center of the Earth is a bit difficult than researchers imagined. The granite rock at the Kola Superdeep Borehole location, for example, was rather easy to drill through when drilling first began there in the 1970s. However, the drillers ran into increasingly dense layers at a depth of 4.3 miles. 
Scientists were taken aback when they failed to locate the granite to basalt transition at the predicted depth of two to four miles below ground. Seismic waves move far more quickly below that depth, according to the data, and this was long thought to be because of a basalt basement by geologists. Instead, the difference was determined to be a change in the rock brought on by tremendous heat and pressure, or metamorphic rock. What's more astonishing is that water was found to be so abundant in the crevices of this deep rock. Scientists believe that the water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms that were pushed out of the surrounding rocks due to the enormous pressure, as free water should not be found at those depths. The layer of impermeable rocks above the water then stopped it from rising to the surface. As a result, numerous drill bits snapped and the crew had to make adjustments to the drilling's course. Therefore, multiple drill paths were taken before a relatively vertical one was attained. The resulting drill pattern is reminiscent of a Christmas tree. The engineers persisted, but the hotter the earth got, the less effective the drill became. Scientists' predictions concerning the temperature gradient were accurate down to roughly 100,000 feet. At about eight miles, the drill started to approach its maximum heat tolerance, despite the scientists' best efforts to counteract the heat by refrigerating the drilling mud before pushing it down. Scientists had predicted that they would find rocks at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at that level, but the actual temperature was closer to 356 degrees Fahrenheit. When the drill bit was removed to be replaced, the hole would often flow closed because the rocks were acting more like plastic than a solid at high temperature and pressure. Forward development became difficult without some technological breakthroughs and major renovations of the equipment on hand, therefore drilling ceased on the SG-3 branch. Temperatures of 572 degrees Fahrenheit were predicted if the hole had been dug to the planned depth of 50,000 feet. After breaking through the first 14,000 feet, engineers found that the rock was substantially more porous and permeable. The combination of this and the extraordinarily high temperatures rendered drilling nearly impossible since the rock became more flexible than solid. The Soviets persisted even though the temperature was too high for their drilling equipment. In 1989, one of the branches from the central Kola hole reached a depth of 40,230 feet. This artificial point is over seven miles deep, making it the deepest ever reached by humans. To put that in context, the hole is as deep as if you stacked Mount Everest and Mount Fuji. The Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean is the deepest part of the ocean at a depth of 37,000 feet below sea level. However, this is deeper. The last of the cores to be plucked from the borehole were dated to be about 2.7 billion years old, or roughly 21 million times older than Coca-Cola. The Earth is a multi-layered structure with intricate features. These layers are classified according to their chemical makeup, physical characteristics, and the processes that take place inside them. The crust of the Earth is the physical layer that humans exist on. Silica and alumina make up the bulk of the crust. Its thickness varies widely, from around 3 miles near the beach to around 45 miles near the mountains. There are two distinct forms of crust on Earth, the thinner and denser oceanic crust and the thicker and less dense continental crust. The mantle can be found under the crust. This layer makes up around 84% of the Earth's volume. About 1,800 miles down is where you'll find the mantle. It has two main sections, the upper mantle and the lower mantle, and is full of silicates and oxides. The mantle is not totally solid, but behaves more like an extremely viscous fluid, allowing for the sluggish movement of tectonic plates, and the boundary between the crust and the mantle is known as the Mohorovi discontinuity, or MOHO. Up to a depth of around 3,200 miles, the outer core is made up primarily of liquid iron and nickel. This fluid layer generates the Earth's magnetic field through a dynamo effect as the Earth rotates. A solid sphere made primarily of iron and nickel, the inner core is the densest part of Earth. Extreme pressure at this depth prevents the core from melting, 
even if the temperature is extremely high, about as hot as the surface of the sun. The radius of the inner core is perhaps around 446 miles. This layered structure is essential for comprehending not just the Earth's composition, but also its processes. The formation of the Earth's magnetic field and the movement of the plates under the Earth's crust are two examples. It is also possible to classify the Earth's layers based on other characteristics, such as their mechanical qualities. According to this description, the Earth is composed of the stiff lithosphere, which consists of the crust and the uppermost mantle, the fluid and movable asthenosphere, the lower mantle, the mesosphere, and the outer and inner cores. The continental crust is the outermost layer of Earth and the layer we stand on. It is roughly 25 miles thick. It takes around 1,400 miles for the outer core to reach the inner core, which is a hot, dense, mainly iron ball with a radius of roughly 758 miles. But even at that depth, the COLA project only reached into a fraction of the Earth's continental crust, which spans from 20 to 80 kilometers thick. In 1994, drilling was discontinued at the site. Why did this drilling deep into Earth happen? We drill large holes for many reasons, most notably for obtaining commodities like fossil fuels and metals. The Kimberley Diamond Mine in South Africa, also known as the Big Hole, is one of the largest holes in the world dug by human hands and no machinery, and it is located in a pit that is three quarters of a mile deep and spans 2.5 miles across. The mine is 100 years old. In the name of science, people dig holes to learn more about geohazards like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, geo-resources like geothermal heat and energy, the evolution of Earth and life on it, and environmental changes in the past so that they can better predict changes in the future, and so on. For instance, by making observations in close proximity to an earthquake zone, Scientists may track the earliest stages of an earthquake's development as it is triggered by stress and strain. To better understand processes that cannot be reduced to simple laboratory tests or computational models, scientists are interested in recovering such near-field physical, chemical, and mechanical data. The Kola Superdeep Borehole yielded a wealth of information for scientists. Since they found temperatures substantially higher than expected, they knew they would have to revise the map of the Earth's inner temperature. Similarly surprising was the lack of a border between granite and basalt, a transition geologists refer to as a Conrad discontinuity, which had been predicted to be there based on the findings of seismic reflection investigations. They also found liquid water at depths much greater than anyone had imagined. Unexpected findings include crevices filled with salt water, which proves the crust is not solid and provides channels for fluids to move. Scientists theorize that Earth's immense internal pressure may have forced water out of rock crystals. The discovery of life in the rocks was even more remarkable. Fossils of single-celled marine organisms dating back two billion years were discovered by scientists at a depth of 4.4 miles. The clearest evidence was minute fossils encapsulated in organic compounds that were unexpectedly preserved despite the severe pressures and temperatures of the surrounding rock. However, the urban legend that sounds from hell was discovered in the Earth's lowest reaches is only a way to drum up interest in the borehole is just that, a myth. There were no microphones or other recording equipment at the drilling site, and at 356 degrees Fahrenheit, even they would have melted. While that's going on, is it possible to dig deeper now? Yes, in due time. However, temperature and borehole stability, which in turn depends on stress, strain, drilling fluid composition, and weight, are crucial for digging deeper than eight miles. Considering that temperatures there could reach as high as 480 degrees Celsius, that will require some highly sophisticated machinery. Reaching the Earth's mantle would be the actual cherry on top, or rather on Earth. Drilling into the mantle would yield a wealth of information. To better understand the nature of this boundary, which is still up for debate, and the processes by which fluids and magma droplets escape from the mantle into the crust and ultimately into our hydrosphere, 
where they feed the biosphere, Earth scientists would like access to the actual in situ mantle. Determining the nature of the Moho discontinuity and its relation to the great planetary circles remains a major focus of scientific inquiry. Regardless, Kola was neither the first nor the last attempt at drilling a super deep borehole, but it was the most successful one up to this point. In 1957, the United States embarked on a similar effort entitled Effort Mohol, but that attempt to drill into the ocean floor was halted due to lack of finance. The current integrated ocean drilling program is attempting to drill through the ocean floor's much thinner crust in order to examine the Earth's mantle. About six miles to the south of the borehole is Zapoljarni, where a massive repository of core samples is kept. The Kola Super Deep Borehole was a scientifically useful site until 2008, when the site was shut down. Drilling can be tedious in the Soviet Union. Step aside, construction of mega skyscrapers and colossal bridges. China is currently at the forefront of a different kind of engineering feat. They are also attempting to bore one of the deepest holes in human history. But breaking a world record isn't their only goal. The ambitious goal of this initiative is to explore the planet's subsurface, to learn more about its geology and locate untapped oil and gas reserves. To get a feel for the scope of this gigantic project, picture 33 Eiffel Towers lined up in a row. Chinese scientists and engineers plan to dig to that depth in the Taklamakan Desert in northwest China. About 36,000 feet into the ground is where the projected borehole will go. The BD-04A oil well in Qatar's Al Shaheen oil field is 40,323 feet long, which is longer than the Kola Super Deep borehole, but does not reach the same depth since it goes around the Earth's crust instead of through it. So the Kola Super Deep borehole in Russia at 40,230 feet remains the world record holder. This staggering depth is nevertheless within striking distance of the Chinese attempt. The Jinhua News Agency, which is run by the Chinese government, claims that there are two goals for the project. First, it will let scientists obtain crucial data about deep Earth geology. Our existing knowledge of the Earth's crust will be improved by this data. The typical depth of this rock stratum is around 18 miles. Second, the hole will serve a practical purpose in the exploration of oil and gas. As drilling progresses to deeper and deeper depths, new opportunities for fossil fuel extraction may open up. Naturally, such a gigantic enterprise comes with its own set of obstacles. It takes over 2,000 tons of machinery and tools to drill this deep. Everything that will be needed to complete this Herculean undertaking is currently being assembled. It will take longer than a year to finish the entire job. Furthermore, the gear needs to be able to operate in harsh environments. The atmospheric pressure can be roughly 1,300 times that of the surface, and temperatures can reach as high as 400 degrees Fahrenheit. When finished, after about 450 days, the Chinese borehole will have traversed 10 continental strata. These are layers of sedimentary rock stretching over entire continents. These rock layers date back to the Cretaceous system, which was formed over 145 million years ago. By taking a deep dive into the Earth, China is offering new insights about our home. Simultaneously, they are opening new frontiers in the quest for energy supplies. Getting to the bottom of the hole could be the first step in solving even more of the planet's ancient secrets. Although we have a basic grasp of Earth's structure, we still have a lot to learn. Indirect evidence such as the analysis of earthquake seismic waves and the magnetic field form the basis of our understanding. Don't forget that the deepest humans have ever drilled reached only approximately 0.2% of the way to the Earth's center. Even if the Kola Superdeep borehole didn't reach the mantle as intended, it still contributed greatly to geology by providing important data about the Earth's crust. It has, and will continue to, motivate further large-scale drilling endeavors that strive to uncover the secrets of the planet's interior.
There is still a long way to go before these problems are solved and humankind can explore the Earth's mantle. However, scientists tend to see things in a more positive light.